Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we'll be talking about physical and chemical properties and changes. It's... Well, welcome back. This time there are no niceties, no formalities. Let's just jump right on into it. Let's open up the picture in picture. Wait, what did I just do? Ah, what button? What button? <sighs> okay, all right. So today we got a couple different things that we're talking about. We've got physical and chemical properties and changes. A physical property is anything that is a description of what that substance is, okay? Now, there are two kinds of physical properties. There's intensive and extensive. And to help demonstrate the difference between the two, allow me to present my friend Darth Tater. Now, as you can see, Darth Tater has a black helmet, a red lightsaber, and a black cape. Now, all of those can be considered intensive properties because they are inherent to what they are. I could have 20 different Darth Taters lined up on my desk and they would all have those same colors. It doesn't matter what arrangement I have of my Darth Tater, his helmet will always be black, his lightsaber is always red, and his cape is also always black. That is an intensive property. An extensive property is one that is based on measurement, meaning that depending on the kind of sample I have, that is actually going to change from sample to sample. For example, I can grab my little tape measure here and I can see that Duratator here is seven and a half inches tall. And if I place him directly on my uh, electronic balance, I can put him on there and see that he is 83.02 grams. However, I take off the helmet, I take off the mask, and I take off his shoes. Now his mass is only 80.41 grams and his height is five and a half inches. So all I had to do was change the sample and all of a sudden those measurements changed. So an intensive property is one that is always the same regardless of the sample size or whatever it is that you have. An ex extensive property is one that is dependent on measurement and can change from moment to moment. Okay, the next one on the list is a chemical property. Now this is a description of what a substance does. For example, as we have seen with the Statue of Liberty, copper will actually turn green in the presence of oxygen. I could also say that there are certain gases, like the noble gases, that just don't react with other substances. So the fact that it doesn't react is still a description of what it does, because what it does is not react. Make sense? All right, moving on. The next section are the changes. Now in a change, something has happened. So what you need to figure out is, is the substance still the same, or is it now something different? For a physical change, the substance is still the same, meaning the original substance is still there after things are finished. So you could take some salt, dissolve it in water, and then when you boil the water away, the salt is still there. Nothing has changed. I could take this piece of paper. I can rip it in half. Now clearly something has happened, but it's still paper, right? Physical change. This was not a reaction. Physical changes are not reactions. Chemical changes on the other hand are reactions. Something has happened and now we have a completely different substance. And to show you an example of that, follow me on over to the fume hood. So check it out. I got here a piece of magnesium. Let's see what happens when we put it into the fire. And 
There it goes. You think this is anything resembling magnesium now? Not likely. That is a chemical change. All right, that's all the time we have for today. If you have any questions, please comment below or send it to chemistrytalk at gmail.com. I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later.